I need some Atmos and present speakers in my theater, and I really need some high efficiency ones, something like the JTR or the Ascendo Audio. And boy, did I look at those, and they are really expensive. Like the JTR 110s, for example, are $1,300 per speaker. So what if we could DIY something that could be a lot cheaper? You know, say you could build four of the DIY speakers for the price of just one JTR speaker. Well, that would be pretty neat. And that is exactly what I'm going to show you how to do today. So I got this idea when I was taking a look at these uh, higher end companies like Ascendo Audio and JTR. There's a lot of companies making these present speakers right now, and they all use this same basic design. They take a 10 inch PA speaker that's actually a coaxial driver that has a one inch compression driver mounted on the back that shoots your high frequencies out and then of course it also has the woofer part which gives you your low end now all of these speakers use something similar now i wanted to make sure that i could use a driver that was better than just the basic ones out there something that would give us a little less distortion and a better sound out of it and that's why i came across this celestion this is the ftx 1025 by celestion which is 96 decibels sensitive making it perfect for a project like this. Now, the best part of it, the driver itself only cost about $260. Now, I wanna be right around $300, so this is perfect for our budget. Now, don't worry about the parts that we're gonna be using here. Both the parts and the build plans will be in the description of the video. This compression driver is actually mounted directly on the rear of the driver. And because of the way that this is mounted, it actually minimizes the depth of the speaker. And that's gonna be really important for the way that we're going to design this box. I decided to design it with a slanted look. And now the reason why I wanted slanted is because then you can use these for rear speakers or for on ceiling Atmos style speakers. Now that's really important because at the price that we're designing these for, you could build eight of these for the price of like one pair of something equivalent that's already mass produced. Now I threw this in a box program and designed a basic shape for the enclosure. Then I sent this over to the CNC so that we could get cutting. Now, you don't need a CNC. There's a reason why I use the CNC and that's because my table saw, I put a brand new motor on and now my tilt function doesn't work. But don't worry, you don't need a CNC. <laughs> I wish the CNC actually cut that fast. In reality though, the CNC took considerably longer than it would have if I had just a table saw that could angle cut. Maybe I should invest in a new table saw. But for now, because of the unique shape of the enclosure, we're gonna glue it all in one pass and it's going to be seven pieces instead of your normal six. This particular piece was giving me a lot of trouble trying to stay at the same angle. So I did cut out a piece that was the exact same height as the rear, and this allowed me to prop that piece up and keep it at the same angle during glue up. Now this was temporary and was removed when glue up was finished. Now clamping an angled box like this does have its unique challenges and because of that I came up with a couple tips and tricks that helped me during glue up and I want to share those with you. Now if you have better ideas make sure to throw them in the comment section. So I want to put some paper towel on here so that the wood doesn't get stuck on here. I want to clamp this tight because otherwise the glue when it expands it'll push this seam up. So I'm going to take some blocks underneath, put them in there, take some clamps Clamp them on, and this should help this stay in the right spot. I'm gonna put this bar right here, and by doing that, I can put pressure on the clamp and on the bottom of the box so that this actually squeezes this together. All right, 
Now, before we paint it, I need to decide on how I want to hook up the woofers. Now, I could hook this up with screws, but I think I'm gonna go with this. This is a T-nut. And what this does is this clamps down on the inside. That way you have something for the screw to screw into. And that keeps pressure from both the back side and the front side of the woofer. And that's gonna be really important, especially if we hang this upside down. Once the glue dried, it was time to remove those clamps and get sanding. Once this was finished, it was ready to paint. Now for that, I used ExoHide from Parts Express along with their special roller to get this really unique textured look. Unfortunately, the video for that has gone missing. Now, if you have any information about the missing video, make sure to contact us at our hotline. And remember, you can remain anonymous. Now that we have that PSA out of the way, we need to talk about the crossover. And the crossover is my favorite part because it takes the two raw drivers and makes them into something special. Now, every crossover has some complexities, but this particular crossover has some very unique complexities to it. Typically, we're gonna take our drivers and we're gonna do an anechoic chamber response because we don't know exactly where someone's going to place them. But in this particular case, we know exactly where someone's going to be putting the speakers. They're either gonna be putting them on the wall or on the ceiling. And because of that, this is going to affect the final frequency response, and that's because of boundary reinforcement. Typically, our low frequency waves are gonna go around the cabinet and get lost behind the speaker. In this particular case, those frequency response waves are actually going to bounce off the wall and come back at the listener. Now, that does have an effect on your low-end extension. In this particular case, in a really good way. It allows us to cross over between 80 and 120 hertz, which is exactly what I want out of a rear surround or Atmos style speaker. Now, on top of that, it did increase our linearity as well, which had to do with the shape of the speaker. High-end also had some complexities to it, and that's because it had a rising high-end. I did create a custom filter with that, which did bring that back down. In the end, the frequency response is about plus or minus two and a half decibels, and that is really good for a speaker of this type of design, especially at this price point. Don't worry, you don't have to worry about knowing exactly how to design this crossover because it is going to be in the plans, along with a video that will show you exactly how to solder this together. I'm absolutely blown away at what they provide for what they are designed for. This is exactly what I needed to complete my Atmos style setup with these high efficiency rears and I couldn't be happier. Now having said that, if you're not into DIY and you don't think you can take a project like this, then take a look at one of those other companies that we talked about earlier, such as JTR or Ascendo Audio. They make fantastic speakers. But if you are into DIY like me and you want to save some money, Take a look at these and see if these will fit your needs. Now, if you like this video, please share it with your friends and your family and your coworkers and even your worst enemies. Just let the video get out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'd love to see you again. All right, guys, this is Toy Studio Audio. I'm out.